orbit. You can go ahead and say your hellos. Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome to the Melanated Morning Show. We are with you. Yeah, that part. What she just said. <laughs> so we are live. Yes, we are. And the show has officially started, Seabreeze. The Melanated Morning Show. Morning, morning. With DJ Kid Disco and co host Cinda Williams. WGFBFM Radio. So are you ready? Yeah. How it used to be. Something for everyone. 24 7, 365. Of, of, of. After these messages, we'll be right back. For the health and safety of our guests and team members, we're here for you. That means frequently deep cleaning our stores and wiping down carts and baskets after each use, reserving dedicated shopping hours for our most vulnerable guests, providing masks and gloves to our team members, and offering contactless shopping options through the Target app, like drive up and same day delivery. We are here for you now more than ever, and your health and safety is our highest priority. Learn more at target.com slash a bullseye view. New Dunkin' Refreshers. Vibrant fruit flavors like strawberry dragon fruit and peach passion fruit. B vitamins and energy from green tea. All under 200 calories. Order ahead via the Dunkin' app for a contactless way to order, pay, and pick up in the drive thru. America runs on Dunkin'. Price and participation may vary. Limited time offer. Amazon is hiring near you. Earn a competitive wage and start as soon as seven days. No resume or experience required. Health and safety are a top priority with all of Amazon's roles and sites. Amazon is taking precautions in their buildings to keep people healthy. Go to Amazon.com slash apply. That's Amazon.com slash apply. Amazon is an equal opportunity employer. Hey, everybody, it is Shelly Shell Williams, host of Single on a Saturday Night. Make sure you follow us on Instagram at Single on a Saturday Night TV. That's at Single on a Saturday Night TV. Follow us on Instagram and we'll follow back. Hey, everybody, it's Shelly Shell Williams, Phillies Oprah, executive producer of Urban Expressions, single on a Saturday night. But I am a business, social media, and media coach. And if you're looking to show up on social media with a purpose, I have a course for you. Have you been struggling as an entrepreneur trying to figure out how to get people to engage, how to get people to buy, how to get people just to see you on social media? I have just a course for you. Please go to ShellyShellWilliams.com to find out more. WGFBFM Radio. So are you ready? Yeah. How it used to be. Something for everyone. 24-7-365. Yo, what's good? This is Tracy Lee. And you already know I gets down with the get down, man. Grown Folks Radio. All day. Hi, everybody. This is Cinder Williams, and I am the co-host of the Melanated Morning Show and the host of the PPC Radio Show. And you are listening to... Grown folks radio, 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 with DJ Kid Disco and co host Cinda Williams. Hi, <laughs> good morning, everyone. Welcome to Thursday's Melanated Morning Show. So, so happy to be here. It's a beautiful, sunny day outside, and I am loving it. How are you doing today, kid? Oh, you want me to wait? Oh, <laughs> I guess he's busy. Anyway, yeah, it's a little chilly outside, but I am absolutely loving this, the, the ability to be able to see the sun today. Um, in spite of all the occurrences of the world, we always are able to look up in the sun at the at the sun that, that um, is a part of our life cycle and enjoy what's happening. So glad to spring. Uh, 
But anyway, yesterday we started something where we're accepting calls. So if you guys are listening in and you just feel like you really want to say something, we're going to take calls probably after the top of the hour of the next hour, because we do have a guest that's coming on, Anthony Wright. We're really excited to have him. I'm sorry. No problem. (laughs) Right when I was getting ready to commercial to go off, the doctor's office was calling me to confirm my appointment. Okay. Okay, cool. So I couldn't. Life still happens when you're at home. You know, I think if we were in the studio, it would be a little bit different, but we are at home. No, it's my cell phone. So it's still with it. That still would have happened no matter where we're at. Mm, no. Yeah. Good morning. Okay. Good morning, y'all. Um, let's just jump right into it, Miss Potter. They've arrested her, as mm-hmm. you announced yesterday. You know, you're always breaking. Do you realize that you break a lot of stories on the PPC radio show? Yeah, a lot happens in the afternoon, it seems. You know, yeah. a lot a lot is going on right when we are doing our show. So because you broke the story to. yesterday mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that she got uh, she got charged with manslaughter. Yeah, second degree manslaughter. You know, I watched the video, which is hard to watch, and but I can see why that's the charge. Not that I, you know, agree with the severity, you know, but it really does seem like she made a mistake. I don't know how she made that mistake. You know, I mean, I was I was reading an article today about how um, usually how they do it, and and I know you know this from from being in the military. Your dominant hip, you know, if you're right-handed, that's where your gun is, and your left dominant hip is where your taser is. So if you're the the immediate thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna know that that's where your gun is, and um, but this isn't this has happened before, and each time that that it's happened that I read about, they got they did go to jail from two to four years for second degree manslaughter, because it has happened before, but the, but nobody understands truly why it happened. I mean, this woman was. Uh, a negotiator sometimes, she was a teacher sometimes, she'd been doing it for a long time. For her to make this kind of mis- mistake doesn't make sense. Um, yeah. Rational that's why sense? I'm not. That's why I'm not accepting that it was a mistake excuse. And I can't Well, get I, like I said, I watched it and, and I'm pretty good. I'm not saying I'm perfect, but I'm pretty good at reading people. And it seemed very evident that she, it was a mistake that she recognized that she made the mistake right away and it freaked her out. I mean, she started saying, I shot him, I shot him. It was it was so cool. It wasn't like it was a long drawn out thing. It was very, very quick that it happened. And um, I don't know how she made the mistake and she should be fired and she should spend time in jail for it. Um, but it didn't seem like it was malicious or premeditated. She probably should have just stayed out of the. I don't know what about this circumstance made her feel like she needed to get involved, um, but but she did. That's the first and, part. She should have never got involved because the first right. officer had the situation under control. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it kind of yeah. So it it doesn't make any kind of sense that way. But when it comes to her thinking about it, making a decision. And um, killing the guy, uh, I don't feel like. Uh uh-uh. uh. Hey, I I'm sorry. What? I was just speaking to our girl Sense, and good morning. Yeah, I saw that. Hi, Sense, how are you? Excuse will, me for looking down. I'm sending my little messages to everybody. I will be with uh Sense, and I will be together tonight at eight o'clock. Sea breeze. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I really love the tunes I picked too, uh, since then. I'm really on some old school, soft old school. You know, like soft 70s, 80s old school, like Shock Khan and, you know, yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's honestly not my um, my way. You know how you kind of like do things at a certain time, whatever. By that time, I'm winding down. I'm not listening to anything. I'm not doing anything, but I'm going to 
really tonight because I want to support my peeps. Uh, I'm going to tune in. Support my peeps. To my peeps. You know, because I consider you guys my peeps. I want to support you. And I know since then, you always supporting us. So yeah. I want to come on there tonight and at least listen for an hour. I can't, if I listen for something too close to bed, songs run in my head and then that messes with my, so I got to have to be quiet. <laughs> next, next <laughs> <You know? laughs> no, I'm just saying, I'm the opposite. If I have songs running through my head, I can't sleep because I'm singing in my head. So I don't I don't listen to too many things late at night, but um, but so I am going to. Eight is this, better than ten. Let's get to this uh, Matt Gates thing real quick. Matt uh, Gates. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He's getting ridiculous. Uh. His buddies already uh, agreed to snitch on him, and I and I believe that that deal was made prior to the story breaking. Mm-hmm. He's so he's. I think he's definitely going to you know because he's looking at some serious time. Yeah. So yeah. now Matt Gates is he did a thing down at what's that Dallas or whatever that other uh, resort that Trump owns. That he was trying to um i think it's called dallas or something like that mm-hmm. and trump calls mitch mcconnell a uh what did he call him pretty much a punk son of a bitch <laughs> that's exactly what he called him, what he called him. Mm-hmm. and um matt gates says that there these all of these allegations are farce and the true target is us well, not us, those people that follow those Republicans. Mm-hmm. And that is all publicity. So they'll have support in public in the public opinion. Mm-hmm. And, but they're and, using they're, him. and they're right, right? Because it's like you're on our side no matter how much wrong you do. <clears throat> but he's saying that they're using him. Now here's the thing. In order to use him. He should have had, he would have had to have done something to piss somebody off prior. Nobody gave a damn about Matt Gates before this. I had never heard of him. Exactly. Nobody was looking for him. No, mother. You got caught. <laughs> <laughs> Period. Period. That's you got all. caught. That's what happened. And when nobody looking, ain't nobody using you. <sighs> anyway yeah it's just the same they're using the same playbook that our um ex-president did you know it's just you know appeal to the crew you know they, they got 48 percent of this country that supports our uh you know president trump uh, passed and 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 he got a crew they're the crew so appeal to them and you'll have at least that many people on your side and maybe that will affect things but with the stuff that he's been doing and caught doing and i don't know he's not the president you know he might be connected to him and hanging his hat with him but he's not him he ain't and that damn connected when, when he tried to get that blank apart and they told him kiss their ass <laughs> the white house did yeah. yeah. Oh, we ain't so, giving you no blanket party. You lost your mind. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, but you know, who can blame him for trying, right? It's worked before, so. Hey, everybody else got one. Mm-hmm. Well, why not? Yeah, I guess he figured, why can't I get one? Everybody else got one. Shit. You know. So I wanted to say right quick hi to my cousin. She's with us again. Elizabeth, we love you. Toronto, hi. I'm not sure. Do you know Toronto? Are you a new guest? Are you new to the channel? Um, uh, who's Shanti, at? my who's friend. At? Shanti, I need you to call if you feel like it, man. Uh, you might be working though. Um, but uh, when I give out uh, this number again, as a matter of fact, I'm going to put the number. What time are we on take calls? At the top of the next hour, 11 o'clock? Yes, at the top of the next hour. Yes. Okay, that way. 
we can hi Robbie D. How you doing, cuz? Um well I'll I'll put the, the phone number on later then so you won't be tempted um to, to call in too soon, but <clears throat> I can't wait to hear somebody's voice and somebody's got to break the, the ice. Okay, Chauncey. <laughs> so unless you're at work and you can't do it, call in, dude, break the ice. So people start calling in because we want to actually hear your voices, you know? Yeah. I don't bite all the time. <clears throat> well, yes, he does, but he'll nibble. <laughs> he'll just nibble. He won't chomp down too hard. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not that bad. So we do have a guest coming, Mr. Anthony Wright. Um, mm -hmm. Story's amazing. Yeah, you guys got to be here for this because he is one of the few that um, was able to overcome a lot of adversity when it comes to the legal uh, and penal system and the way things are for us in that world, you know, my sister Sadika, that's her her company, you know, trying to help people, men and women uh, and kids who, who go to jail. But this case is a little different because he was wrongly accused, wrongly incarcerated and never stopped fighting for his his release. And he made it and was able to to take his experience and help others. So we can't wait to, we can't wait to have him on the story. He's from Philadelphia, um, your, your home. And um, my home, yes. Inspiring, inspiring story. Um, you can, especially if you're wrongly accused, you can do something. You can, you know, I'll let him tell his story, but I'm excited to have him on. He's coming on in about 15 minutes or so. Um, for, <clears throat> and for, in fact, I believe this is him right there, right now. We're going to welcome him in and then send him back to the waiting room, right? Oh, okay. No? No. He knows it's at 1030. This is just, it's up to you. I'm going with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he knows he I'm, comes on. Well, you know maybe my mama, we'll start. You know my huh? mama used to say, Seabreeze? What? Listen to the woman. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure. He, he, he was told to be waiting in the waiting room. And so maybe we can just do the commercials a little bit earlier so he comes right in at 10 30. Yeah, that's exactly what we're going to do. So mm -hmm. um, how about that popcorn salad? Oh, if you missed it yesterday, I know some of you were with us. Um, the, the popcorn salad, I have not tried it yet. I'm I'm going to go. I just got to get some ingredients. Uh, I think it's a good idea uh, to mix that salty crunch with a salad. So you really going to eat that shit? Salad don't have any meat, huh? So you, so you really going to eat that shit? Yes. I'm going to try it. Do you eat popcorn ever, Eddie? Yeah. Okay. Do you ever eat salad? I, I know that's a big one. Do you ever eat yeah. salad? Yeah. So why not try to mix it? See what happens. If But if you're like my daughter, my daughter, Sophia. I hilarious. eat oatmeal and steak, but I'm not going to mix them together. No, I think, I think you're right about that. That's probably not going to be good, but you never know. But um, Sophia, she's the type of anal OC, does it call OCD that doesn't want anything touching? I'm like, so that. she'll have you know, green beans, yeah. can't touch the meat, you know. Yeah, I'm like, that. I don't like my food, can't touch yeah. the potatoes, yeah, uh, gotta be separate. The plate has to be big enough so everything is separate, and then she eats it one at a time, right? That's me. I knew I liked that. <laughs> I need a compartment plate, like, I don't want my stuff touching. Hey, you gotta get. You know they have those. I don't know where, but they they've gotta have them. You know, maybe you can I got them upstairs those. in my kitchen. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> like there are that. a lot of people like that. I I. You know, I don't think he understood. Don't care he about that. I don't think he understood. He left. I'm I'm definitely OCD. Oh, he hung up. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Well, maybe he'll call back at ten thirty. Whatever happens, you know we will handle it. Not tripping. 
No, not at all. It's just, it's just something. Not, I just do not tripping. But anyway, um, mm -hmm. so yeah, I'm gonna try it. I, I, yesterday I was proud of myself because, you know, I'm now that soap's gone. I don't really and William eats the way William eats when William eats, which is whenever he comes home because he works so many hours. Um, I don't eat a lot. You know, I eat like a bird, you know, I'll just grab something here and there, no real meals. Now that it's just me really to, to eat. Um, but last night I was like, okay, I can't do that anymore because I can't grab my little turkey pepperoni anymore. I can't, you know, I'm trying not to eat the cheese, so much cheese, to eat a slice of cheese. So I need to actually make something so that, you know, I can have a meal and you know because it's just healthy you got to eat something and since i'm trying not to eat meat i gotta make something that's not meat okay so i got some portobello mushrooms that i'm okay. gonna make tonight what you're doing too much yesterday on the ppc radio show i i revealed to y'all that i'm a bum and i eat like a bum <laughs> yeah well, see, that's that's your choice, and and everybody's got their choice. So you, so your thing is, you've always been thin, tall, and thin, and so you have never had in your face the reason why you need to eat right. Me, on the other hand, thyroidectomy, no metabolism. If I don't eat right, I blow up, and you know I have it in my family. It runs in my family. Obesity. I'm not trying to go there. I want to live a long, healthy life. I don't want to, I don't want diabetes. I already have blood pressure, a high blood pressure. I'm trying to maintain it. I have a lot of reasons to eat right. You know, I really care. And I made a comment. Sometimes you make comments to other people that you need to hear. And when I was talking to Shelly, I think it was last week, I, I said, you know, it's all about a choice and the priorities. What's important to you? Uh, if you care, about your health, you'll make the sacrifices needed. You'll change your taste buds to do it. And I care, you know, I'm still doing movies and stuff like that. And I just don't want to be the thick best friend. You know, sometimes <laughs> I to, okay. you know what I'm saying? Sometimes I want to be the the sexy neighbor or or the teacher that that that's very healthy or whatever. I, I want to like what I see on the screen. The sexy cougar neighbor. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. I just want to be the healthy woman. You know, that's I what you. I want to represent. You know, I'm not trying you. to be no no stick thin because I am not. You know, I'm a big you. thick woman, but I want to be a healthy big thick woman. You know? I got you. We can ready to take commercials early today because my okay. man's back, so I don't want to keep him going. So we'll be back. Go ahead and do your do the announcement, C Breeze. I'm ready. Do the announcement. We'll be uh back in uh what three point five? Uh, I was trying to get that out, so three point five? Yeah, three point five minutes. Three and a half minutes. Hi Nancy. The melanated morning show. Morning, morning. With DJ Kid Disco and co host Cinda Williams. Radio. WGFB FM Radio. So are you ready? Yeah. How it used to be. Something for everyone. 24 7, 365. After these messages, we'll be right back. For the health and safety of our guests and team members, we're here for you. That means frequently deep cleaning our stores and wiping down carts and baskets after each use, reserving dedicated shopping hours for our most vulnerable guests, providing masks and gloves to our team members, and offering contactless shopping options through the Target app, like drive up and same day delivery. We are here for you now more than ever, and your health and safety is our highest priority. Learn more at target.com slash a bullseye view. New Dunkin' Refreshers. Vibrant fruit flavors like strawberry, dragon fruit, and peach passion fruit. B vitamins and energy from green tea. All under 200 calories. Order ahead via the Dunkin' app for a contactless way to order, pay, and pick up in the drive-thru. America runs on Dunkin'. Price and participation may vary. Limited time offer. 
Amazon is hiring near you. Earn a competitive wage and start as soon as seven days. No resume or experience required. Health and All right, everybody, uh, we are still on Facebook. I don't know if you can hear the commercials because I can't. So anyway, yeah, I'm changing the way I'm eating. Um, another change, I've been changing for years. So um, now it's eliminating food, taking a, a sugar fast. Uh, it's also Ramadan. So though I'm not a Muslim, I... Um, I, I respect the Muslim tradition uh, of Ramadan and I try yeah. to do my own fasting just like I did for the Easter holiday, the, the time up to then. I respect the, the um, traditions mm -hmm. of my family and my friends. And um, so happy Ramadan, by the way, for those of you that are going through it. So and, our guest um, is here. Can you hear okay. us, brother? I see him. Yeah, you're on mute, sir. You're on mute. Can you unmute yourself? Yeah. I'm sorry. Good morning. No. Hi, Good morning, Anthony. brother. How you doing? I'm well, thank you. Thank All you right, so we, we got about another 60 seconds for a commercial break, and then we're going to come right back to you. And we're okay. Yeah, yeah. We, we, Facebook doesn't always hear all the commercials, so I still communicate because I don't want them to leave us. I want them to hang out with us. So, um, mm -hmm. I, I try to keep them engaged uh, after I go get my water or whatever it is I need to do. But we're That's excited right. to have you here, man. Been hearing about you for a while. Morning show. Morning, morning show with DJ Kid Disco and co-host Cinda Williams. Yeah. All right. So we are back. Uh, we have our uh, guest with us, Mr. Anthony Wright. Um, See Breeze, go ahead and tell that story a little bit more. Which one? Which uh, one? Mr. Wright, you know what happened? Oh, you know. oh okay, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so Mr. Wright, um, I mean, he can talk for himself, but yes. I know that you got um, charged and blamed and incarcerated for crimes, not just one, crimes that you did not commit. You always maintain your innocence. And thank God, after far too long, exactly, I, I wrote it down because it was so crazy, 9,074 days behind bars, you were finally able to break out them chains. And, um, and not only have you, did you do that, you didn't just, you know, uh, tiptoe back into life, you have bum rushed back into life to change things. And I just love, love your story. Hmm. So go ahead, brother. Uh, if you could just tell us your story. Well, well, again, uh, thanks for having me. Uh, you know, my story started uh, back in 1991. Back in 1991, <clears throat> I was a young guy. You know what I mean? Just trying to find my way through life. I was just 20 years of age. Uh, I was staying in, 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 in North Philadelphia, part of the city. Uh, with my mother at the time. And at the time, I had a four-year-old son. And, you know, I grew up all my life in the streets of North Philadelphia, you know, on a blacktop, mm -hmm. playing football, playing basketball, playing baseball, going to the gym, boxing. And, you know, early one Sunday morning uh, in, in 1991, October 20th, to be exact, around 1 o'clock, uh, uh, a few minutes before that, my mother, I was upstairs sleeping and my mother had just woke me up to come downstairs to eat brunch. Her and the young lady I was dealing with at the time was in the kitchen preparing brunch. And I got up and I came downstairs. And as I did so, I came down and laid right across the couch. My son was playing with his toys uh, uh, on the floor right beneath me uh, on the couch. And almost simultaneously, uh, the phone rang and it was a knock at the door. 
And I was laying on a couch. I was closer to the phone. So I just reached my arm back and grabbed the phone. And at the same time, my mother ran in the living room and, and answered the door. And while, when I answered the phone, it was my son grandfather on the phone. And he said, the police just left their house looking for me deeper inside of North Philadelphia. And I'm looking at my mother and she turned around and looked at me. And I said, what's wrong? She said, it's the police. I said, open the door. So she opened the door, the police came in. So I said, uh, the police just walked through our door. I'll call you back, you know what I mean? You know, after they leave, let me see what they want. I hung up the phone and, and I said, what's going on? And they proceeded to say, you know, uh, they wanted to talk to me. And my mother just went ballistic. Talk to him about what? He didn't do anything, you know what I mean? And, and I didn't do anything. So, uh, uh, you know, because my mother went ballistic and, and they really didn't want to talk to me there at my mother's home. They wanted me to accompany them. I'm sorry, they wanted me to accompany them to the police administration building which was downtown Philadelphia. Roundhouse. Yeah, the Roundhouse. Wow. Anybody, yeah, anybody familiar know what no, that I'm is? I'm from Philly, bro, so I know when you go downtown, yeah, it's a problem. Yeah, the Roundhouse. So, again, I didn't do nothing. And, you know, I was, you know, I had shorts on, no shirt. They allowed me to go upstairs to my room, get fully dressed. I came back down, and they escorted me outside. Uh, uh, um, uh, they put me in the backseat of the car. One of the detectives got in the backseat beside me and the other detective got in the driver's side and drove. So during the whole way of being transported to the police administration building, they was making small talk and laughing, which I thought wasn't funny. And, you know, I was hearing it, but it was I wasn't hearing it. I was trying to figure out why am I here? And why did these guys show up at my mother's house? And what do you want to talk to me about? And they just kept on making small talk about nothing. But once we reached that police administration building, it seemed like all hell broke loose, man. And instead of, you know, somebody, you know, uh, they wanted to ask questions to, things got very aggressive. Uh, you know, they said. So let's, so let's, let's fast forward a little bit. What exactly did they charge you with once you got there? Uh, they charged me with, well, well, they inter interrogated me for about probably three or four hours. So it's during the time they interrogated me, uh, I was telling them where exactly where I was during the time in question that this crime supposedly had took place. That's what I said. The only thing I said for three to four three and a half to four hours. I repeated the same thing over and over again. I was handcuffed uh, to a, a chair, uh, like I'm sitting in front of you. So my left hand was uh, handcuffed between my legs, uh, between a chair. And uh, uh, so, uh, you know, I was in there crying. I was 20 years old. I was in there crying like a baby for my mother. We talking about murder in the first grade. Hey man, I was scared to death. And, so they and, charged you with that, 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 that day or? Yeah, so what happened was after the three or four hours, one of the detectives came in, another detective came in with a bunch of papers and put them in front of me for me to sign. And it was a bunch of writing on the papers and I read, leaned over and I tried to read the papers. He wouldn't allow me to read the papers. He covered the papers with his hand except for just where he wanted me to, to sign my signature and my initials. And they told me if I sign these papers, I can go home. Again, things got really physical in there and aggressive. And my mother was in it, was, was within the air shot of me. I could hear my mother, wherever she was, outside screaming, where's my son? Where's my baby? And, and, and I was in the room doing the same thing. I was screaming for her. I wanted my mother. I signed the papers. I did exactly what they told me to do. I feared for my life. I did exactly what they told me to do. And once I did that, they said I just confessed uh, to this crime, murdering a 77-year-old woman, a widow, uh, Miss Louise Tiley. Uh, so let's fast forward a little bit. So, okay, you go to trial, and what happened? they convict you at the trial. 
because yeah. Of- so so what 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 happened was after I was charged with this crime, uh uh uh, right after I was arrested in 1991. Fast forward two years, so I sat in the county jail waiting to go to trial for two years. So my trial be about to begin in 1993. So I come in the courtroom and I pick my jury. I pick my entire jury in 1993. So after we picked the last jury member, and and then and, and that jury member was escorted out. Uh, uh, now uh, I'm sitting there between both of my attorneys and the judge begin to talk. So and one of the first things he said to my attorneys was, uh, counsel, uh, your client didn't want a DNA test. And in 1991, up until that very moment, I've never heard that terminology used, DNA. I've, that was never, new, heard that, those, yeah. I've never heard those three letters used in that order, DNA. So, you know, uh, the judge was talking as if I wasn't there. So I turned around and to look at my mother, and she had a puzzled look on her face like, what the hell was that? What, what, what do you mean by that? So I took it upon myself and raised my hand. I said, excuse me, Your Honor. You know, I'm sitting here, you know, with, with my attorney. Uh, uh, you know, you speaking as if I'm not here. I said, you just use the terminology I've never heard in my entire life. I said, can you elaborate on that a little bit so I have a better understanding of what you're speaking about? And when he explained what DNA was, I was flabbergasted. I literally fell on the floor. And this whole case was a, based on DNA scientific evidence. And I'm looking at both of my lawyers, and I'm like, time out. Can I have a moment with my attorneys? I'm like, what are you guys doing? So, like, wait, a minute. We- so, so wait a minute, wait a minute. 20 second timeout. So you were never offered the opportunity to take a DNA test? I was was never, well, well, you must understand, in 1991, DNA was in its infancy state. I mean, how how far, yeah, how how far back uh, a human being or first animal go? So DNA existed forever, but as far as bringing the technology of the the world, the scientific evidence, which was created by Mr. Barry Shett and Mr. Peter Newfelt, which brought it to the masses in 1994, I believe, when O.J. Simpson went to trial. I believe that's when the world got you know, I mean, the logistics of what DNA and scientific evidence was. But in 1991, when I was arrested, and fast forward two years later to 1993, when I went to trial, when I was about to begin trial. DNA was in its infancy stage. You know what I mean? It was at, even though it was in its infancy stage, it was at a point where it could have got a definite profile and said, yes, it's Anthony Wright. Yes, it was you. Yes, it was her. And and so no. uh okay. so we got no. that early, we got that early test done. So the test came back inconclusive. And the lab in black and white in black and white wrote a report that said nothing we did can link Anthony Wright to this crime. Okay, so now, let's so so let's fast forward a little bit more back to the trial. So you're you're convicted at this I'm point. I'm convicted. So okay. in 1993 so in 1993 after the DNA come back, I go to trial. I'm convicted. I'm convicted I'm convicted of murder in the first degree rape robbery wow. and about five or six seven other so, charges so by this time you're 22 i'm, I'm building the timeline yeah. yes so by, by this time, time when i go to trial i'm 22 yes okay so when you were in the county for two years what was you at the creek the birds which one i was at the bird you was at the bird <laughs> i was at home bird man the worst place in america but you didn't get there until 91 yeah, I got there in 1991. Okay, I'd already left. That's why I'm. That's what I'm getting at, brother. See if we had pissed in the same pool because I was there. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah. So yeah. okay, so let's fast forward. All right, your first. I know your first stop was probably Camp Hill to get processed, right? Yes, my first stop after conviction, uh, uh, after leaving the bird was uh. Was no, Campus. well, well, you go to Greater Ford back then. You go to Greater Ford. In quarantine for about fourteen days, days and then for about you go to two Camp weeks, and then they transfer you to uh, Camp Hill. Camp Hill is where you go 
to see where you're going to be housed at. And right. my, 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 uh, I was housed back at Greatest Ford. So I was at Camp Bill for about three and a half, four months. And then I was transported back to Greatest Ford great. to uh, do my sentence. All right, so, so Anthony, you did. So, Anthony, it seems like basically all of this sums up to it was illegal from beginning to end. It was illegal. Every, you everything. didn't have a lawyer, right? They yeah. forced you to sign paperwork. Uh, uh, right. Uh, uh, right. I did it without right. letting you read it, without right. letting a lawyer read it. And then they, they do this DNA test that's inconclusive and, and they do all these things. And yeah. so can I ask, um, was it they were just trying to wrap it up and get, get a conviction or was it that they really believed it was you? Why, what happened? I have, I have, absolutely, that's, that's a, uh... That's a gazillion dollar question. I mean, no, but everybody want to know just that. Like, how did, did did Anthony Wright, how did Tony become a suspect? That question is posed every single day. And I wish we had the answers and, 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 and we probably never know why. But during, right after the crime uh, happened or uh, this, 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 this poor woman was discovered, uh, 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 that way in her home. The police did their investigation. So what they did was they grabbed so many, all these young kids off the corner. They grabbed these 14 and 15 year old young kids off the corner and threatened them and made them sign statements saying that it was me. They saw me running oh. this house. They saw me running this house. They grabbed crackheads from the, that same area off the corner that had outstanding bench warrants and told them to come in, sign these statements that said that they saw me running this house. And even the, some of the crackheads even said they knew me. I was in the house with them the night prior smoking crack. So, wow. so, so wow. it sounds like a total setup. It sounds like yeah. they were trying to cover for somebody else. Hey man, it, 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 I mean, who it's knows? A, but it's the, insane. It's so, 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 I went to trial in 1993. I got found guilty. And because my case was a capital case, that means it was a death penalty case. So mm -hmm. right after the trial, after I was found guilty, the next day I had another trial to see was I going to get death. So unfortunately for me, in order for you to get death, everybody has to vote yes unanimously one way. Yes. If one person says no, your sentence automatically go to a life sentence. And that's what happened to me. Two people said no on my jury, which made my sentence automatically go to a life sentence. Ten people said death, and two people said Two people said no, so I just can, escaped. Can I ask you a question? Another question. This is a just just so you know, this is a conversation show, so we don't ask you questions. So, so what kind of evidence did they present besides your signed confession, which was forced? It's, it's listen, it's insane. So, so right after, right. Right after I was arrested, right after these people took me out of my mother's house, took me down April Race, the police administration building, and right after I signed uh, the statement thinking I was going home, but it was a confession uh, that they drew up. So they then ran back to my mother's house, knocked on the door, and flashed something in her face and bumped bars right through the door. Bars almost knocked her over. Bars right now. She said, what's going on? Where's room at? She pointed. They went upstairs and they planted the clothes that the perpetrator wore during a crime that they said was mine and placed them under my bed. They said, oh, we found the bloody clothes under his mattress. And that's what they brought to, to, brought to court. So that's fast it, forward. It, it, it. It seems like a setup. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It seems like a frame up to cover for somebody else. Yeah, yeah. Because it was too detailed. They went to too many steps to someone yeah. they thought that couldn't. Can I ask you another question? Were, yeah. were the lawyers court appointed? Or did you guys find yes, your own lawyers? Yes, yes. 
Yes, they was they was caught up on it. So they was caught up on it. So mm -hmm. I reached out to my father at the time, and I said, Dad, uh, I said I need a I, I need a new lawyer. I said this these guys are working with the Commonwealth. So because I said that, so remember, remember, uh, go back to '93 when I started trial. So I sat for two years waiting to go to trial. So now when I go to trial. Let me tell you guys this. When I go to trial, about to start trial, I pick my last juror. And remember, a few moments ago, I told you, right after the, I picked the last juror, and she was escorted out the courtroom, the judge mentioned DNA. So now, right then, the judge called Cellmark Diagnostic Lab in, in Maryland. That was the lab we was using to get the logistics of what the test contains, you know what I mean? How long it's going to take and what's the procedure. So we right there on the intercom in the courtroom. So the lab explained all that to us. So we want the test. So now we had a, just a question of jury. So now the judge have to call the jury back in and dismiss them. Because we can't, We these people is away from their livelihood, their family, their loved ones, you know what I mean? Whatever they do. So we had to let them know we got to dismiss them. We gonna uh, when the DNA test come back, we'll have to repeat the same thing and pick a new jury. So during that time, the test takes six to eight weeks. So when the lab get the clothing that's being tested, they don't start working on the clothes until three weeks after it reaches their lab. So during that time, court is in recess. I'm trying to reach both of my attorneys. For two months, I haven't spoken to none of my attorneys. I got at least a thousand people that's outside calling, going to the office. Nobody can reach them. They're never there. And I'm like, what, what is going on? I was telling my father, I need a new attorney. So can I, I, can I ask a question? Yes. Are they still lawyers today? Well, one of them is a judge and one of them passed away. One of them passed away, unfortunately, and he took everything that belonged to me legally to the grave with him. So fast forward 25, 23 years later, my lawyers, my my team couldn't find one piece of paperwork from my lawyer from 25 uh, five years ago. So okay. yeah, let's let's do that. Let's do that in the in the in the in the in the essence of time. Let's do that. Let's fast forward 25 years right. to how did you get to the point where you were you were uh, released? How did, can, how did I, can, I, can I ask a question before that, though? Yes. Because to me, for me personally, because you know me, PPC, okay, you don't, he, yeah. you don't know what PPC means, but it, it has to do with your mental state, your emotional state, your spiritual state. Having this happen to you, this horrible, horrible thing, while you're sitting in prison knowing you're innocent, how did you manage before you were finally released to keep this beautiful spirit that you obviously have in spite of it all? How did you manage to keep your sanity and keep yourself beautiful and pure in spite of this horrible frame the frame up that happened to you and then we can talk about what happened afterwards Thank i mean you i mean for, you know that, this is the, that situation i'm 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 tony wright i'm the 344 person that was wrongly accused and convicted of a crime that situation affect so many men and women differently uh uh, uh you know i've seen so many of my exonerated brothers and sisters that aren't even a uh, shadow of themselves. But for me, uh, God, God, you know, uh, 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 before we got on the air, uh, uh, you mentioned uh, uh, Ramadan and being a Muslim. I'm a Muslim, I'm participating, I'm fasting during this beautiful holy month of Ramadan. And, 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 and it's funny, this is my favorite time of the year, this month. Uh, during my 25 years of incarceration, Everything beautiful came my way during this month. All the good news I got, so I was blessed in so many ways during this month. But you know, God first, God first, and my family. I left a four-year-old boy 
uh, uh, who, who's been by my rib for 25 years all the way through. My son never wavered. My brother, Darnell Fisher, kept me alive out here in, 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 in the world, kept me alive every day. I lost my mother in 1998. This was a lady that gave me her life. She gave me everything. This was the hardest thing I ever did in my life. But 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 that's where my strength came from every day. Uh, I wanted to quit so many times, but every time I wanted to quit, my mother uh, uh, flashed in my my my, my brain. I, my son face, I saw it clearly, and and, and my brother, yeah, you know I mean my mother, uh, my stepmother, my father, uh, my 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 three siblings, my my two little sisters, my little brother, uh, my grandmother, my aunts, my uncles, so many people. You know, I tell people all the time, each year you're in prison, each year you're away from the community, each year you're in prison, each year you get older, each year you're in prison, your mother get older, each year you're in prison, your father get older, each year you're in prison, you lose a family member. I was there for 25 years. I know men that's been there for 50 years. I know a man that's got out after 68 years who doesn't have nobody. And I used to tell the young people all the time, don't become institutionalized. You no longer have communication with the outside world. So all your communication is inside this box. So then after a while, you know what I mean? Not only physically are you trapped, but mentally you're trapped as well. You know what I mean? Everything you talk about, I didn't want to talk about nothing and listen. It had no benefits to me. I didn't know, want to know who was driving what car out there. I didn't know what girl grew up in the who's the night. That had no benefit to me. I wanted to know about the new law that was passed. I wanted to know what would benefit me to help me prove my innocence, not to the judicial system, but to the world. I was drugged through the mud by outside of everybody that wasn't inside my camp, that wasn't a part of my circle, my family. Yeah, you know I mean? So it Just seems like friend. you had a fire. You had a fire yeah. in you. Yeah, so and, 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 and that was my <laughs> strength, getting up every day. I wanted to prove the world wrong. And I'm gonna tell you something, a, a quick story. My one of my sen my senior attorney from the Innocence Project, her name, her name is Miss Nina Morrison. I call her a pit bull in a skirt. When I mm -hmm. first met her, 15, 16 years prior to me coming home, she said, We're gonna bring you home. And not only that, then she right after that, in the same breath, she looked me in my eyes. She said, They're gonna love you when we done. And I looked at her like she was crazy. I looked at this lady, white lady, like if she was crazy. And true story, I never knew what she meant to, to, to the day I walked out of that jail. My case opened the door for everybody in prison today. Uh, it opened the door because we exposed the corruption. It seemed like every single cop on my case was corrupt. Every single cop on my case was involved in misconduct, whether it was with me or him or her or him or her or him or her. Just, I've been home uh, August 23rd, 2016. That's uh, uh -huh. a little over four years. So many men and women has come home because of the door we opened. You know what I mean? So praise be to God for that. that that's a blessing. And, you know, we, we, uh, this show isn't super long, so we can't we can't uh, get into every detail. Did you write a book? You you have a book, right? I do have a book. I do have a book. Thanks for asking. I have a book, uh, the Tony Wright, Amity Wright story. It's called Live to Tell. Uh, uh, we should be the book should be coming out within the next couple weeks, if not by the end of this week, right. for sure by next week. And then we have a huge film about my life, a documentary uh, coming out uh, probably later next year, uh, early uh, 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 23, but should, should be definitely uh, 22, no later than the first uh, quarter of uh, 2023. Well, I, I want to get back to Eddie's question, who I rudely interrupted because <laughs> I had to get my PPC moment in there. Always doing so, it. <laughs> 
sorry. I'm sorry. To me, the most important thing about any of these stories is how you did it. To me, all the steps, all the details, all the ugly mean nothing because until we know what it did to you on the inside. So somebody that's listening or somebody that might this this could happen to can know how you did it. So they can survive too. To me, that that's the reason why so many horrible things happen to people is so that they can be a leader for others. And I know you're a motivational speaker, so I gotta had to get that part out. Um, so so Eddie, you asked them what? Yeah, I want to get to within the next five to seven minutes. How did you get the hell out of there? <laughs> hey man, listen, listen. Uh, that's a that's a great question, and 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 uh, the way I did that, uh, you know, I, I, I gained a few heroes uh, 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 while I was behind behind that wall, and I I read a lot. So I read about men and women that was in the same struggle as I, George Jackson, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, Marcus Garvey, men of that sort, uh, 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 the beautiful sister Angela Davis, all she did, Asada Shakur. So, you know, I read about people being in a similar situation and saw how they survived and how they got through that. And and, and and I did the same thing, man. So I I I I I lived my life the same way. My body was 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 confined, but my brain, my mind was always free. Even though uh I was incarcerated physically for nine thousand and seventy-four days, that's a quarter of a century, that's twenty-five years. Physically, I was confined. But my mind was always free during that whole 25 years. My brain never did one day. I mean, one second and one day. And even more, you know. So minute, let, me, let me understand something real quick. Um, so you went, you got another trial? How did you, what? I'm the, I'm, I'm the first person. So listen, so, so we litigated. I was. From the time I was arrested in 1991 up until we litigated for any way to prove I wasn't the guy. So let me say this real quick. So when I fell in 1991 when I was arrested, again, DNA was in this embassy stage. Fast forward 20 years later, DNA is a trillion times better than it was 20 years prior. So now we litigated for DNA testing for uh, my attorneys at the Innocence Project litigated for DNA testing for eight to 10 years and they denied it. And finally, it was a change of the guard in Philadelphia. The old regime, Lynn Abraham, was mm -hmm. going out the door. A new regime came in. That's the black guy, Seth Williams. Seth this Williams. guy being arrogant, being arrogant he called my lawyer and surprised him and said, y'all want the DNA test? Let's do it. Even more, what was surprising, my lawyers themselves got a, a search warrant for the clothes that they said the perpetrator wore, which was supposed to be myself. Lo and behold, I'm convicted already 20 years in. I'm convicted already. Lo and behold, them being arrogant, my lawyers obtained a search warrant and they still had the clothes. We get the clothes and the DNA test. We get the test done. Almost as soon as they take the swab out my mouth, my lawyers called the jail for me and they're screaming on the phone, oh, my God, we got a hit. We got the perpetrator. So I said, you know, got to be kidding. I said, what you mean? They said, we got the guy that did it. And not only that, but almost in any state, when you take that test and it says, not you, they immediately release you. I don't care where you at. If you're in a jail, if you're in a court, these people refused to release me. They wanted mm. another test. They said, y'all, test the collar. All right, came back and excluded them. Okay, test the underarms now. We tested the underarms. They said, that's not enough. Okay, test the crotch of the pants. We tested the crotch, excluded me even more. They said, okay, that's not enough. We want another test, test the knees. We tested the knees, excluded me. 
And after 23 years, they said, y'all right, bring him to court. They brought me back to court and threw away my whole sentence. After 20, and then in 2014, they brought me back to court and vacated my whole entire sentence. They took the life sentence away. They took the rape charges away. They took the murder charges away. They took everything away. But then they revoked my bail and, 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 and decided to hold me an additional two more years when made a 25 years to retry me. I'm the first man that ever been retried. I'm the first, I'm the first man that ever been retried. I'm the first man that ever been retried. And, 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 Even and though they put, had indisputable proof that it was not you. Hey, they had hey, the proof. I'm going to tell you that. I'm going to tell you this. When I walked in court 25 years later, I had the biggest smile on my face. I wasn't worried about nothing. It seemed like I've been work, waiting for this moment all my life. I knew I had men and women sitting beside me and back of me that was there to go to war, and they just did just that. I know I, we got we got to we have to take a commercial break, but I I did want to say this. If, if, I know you're a Muslim. I, you know, I, I know about the Muslim faith and because a lot of my family are Muslims and then I, I, I grew up in the Christian church and it reminds me, it's, it reminds me of, of the whole trial in Egypt, how the Pharaoh's heart just kept being hardened so that the glory of God could show. That's what I feel like. It feels like they just kept getting hardened so your case could get stronger. And they kept me, you had to sit there, you had to be still but because you were free here. You can manage that as long as it was to really be able to then change the whole system because that's what your case did. It changed the whole system. And I am very proud of you and, and the strength in you and the power that you have now to change things. Um, and I, I really appreciate your story. And, thank you. And, um, thank you for for sharing it with us. I really yeah, absolutely. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Appreciate and it. To thank make you. a long story short, before we go to break, for those of y'all don't know how this ended, ended in, a, in a good way, because I understand that you sued the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Yeah. And you got that dough. <laughs> yeah, man. And it is crazy, man. Again, uh, you know, I'm the first person that did that, man. I I won a civil suit, man, shortly after my uh, exoneration. I won the biggest lawsuit ever in the city of Philadelphia uh, right after that. Open the door, um, you know what I mean, for the men and women that were in my position that come right after me, man. So we working, man. They still fighting, but we, we working, man. We pushing the envelope forward. And we making great strides, man, to, 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 to making sure uh, you're like you can never quick. pay nobody back for uh, uh, having their life taken the way uh, Miles was taken or any one of my Johnnery brothers or sisters. Uh, uh, you can never, no amount of money can get, get that back to me. I told the judge, if you can give me my mother back, you ain't got to give me a dime. I walk right out your courtroom right now. And that was impossible for him to do, man. So, you know, you know, the little conversation, man, you know I mean, it, 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 it helps. It helps. It helps a lot. And, 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 and and so many men are fighting and women are fighting uh, uh, for that conversation. And it's crazy that, yeah, I mean, you know, after their life was taken, they have to go through, yeah, I mean, another trial, yeah, I mean, you know, to have any type of life for themselves. So, um, so I just want to tell you before we go to break that Michael is very supportive. Michael Burgess, he said he, this is very educational and man and um, uh, another Michael Swinford said, "Bless you, brother. Keep saying your truth. You're an inspiration." And Beth, hey babe, has said, "Thank goodness you are home." So um, I, I know that uh, Eddie posted uh, your your information on Facebook. So please, everyone, please, please, please check out his book. Read it. Pass it along. Share. Watch the documentary because we have got to change this. It, this is just the beginning. This is this was the beginning in Philadelphia, but this change needs to occur across this country and beyond. And um, thank you so much for your. And then, and, and, and real quick, uh, my Instagram. You know, you guys can follow me and see what I'm doing, where I'm at, exactly when the book's coming out, when the movie coming out, the documentary, and that is Anthony Wright underscore official. Again, that is Anthony 
right underscore official. Uh, that's my IG page. All the information about uh, me is, is, is you can get it right there. What I'm doing, what city I'm in, uh, when the book's coming out, when the documentary is coming out. Uh, again, thanks for having me. Yes. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, post that on the chat so everybody. Thank, else you. Thank yes. you so much. I, I appreciate you for coming through. That was damn. That's a hell of a story. Uh, I really appreciate you for coming through. Shout out to uh, uh, your contact that hooked me up with you, Izzy Ike, friend of mine. Izzy Ike, friend of the yes, show. sir. That's my brother. My God. <laughs> Thank you, Ike. We appreciate it. And we're gonna go to break, Sea Breeze, and we'll be back in. We're going to talk about three and a half minutes. I ain't even going to tell you what we're going to talk about. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Anthony. All right. All right. Thank you very much, brother. We appreciate it. Uh, we get ready to go to get ready to go to break now. Um, three and a half. We'll be back. Yes. That part. Yeah. The Melanated Morning Show. Morning, morning show. With DJ Kid Disco and co host Cinda Williams. WGFBFM Radio. So are you ready? Yeah. How it used to be. Something for everyone. 24-7-365. After these messages, we'll be right back. For the health and safety of our guests and team members, we're here. and wiping down carts and baskets after each use, reserving dedicated shopping hours for our most vulnerable guests, providing masks and gloves to our team members, and offering contactless shopping options through the Target app, like drive up and same day delivery. We are here for you now more than ever, and your health and safety is our highest priority. Learn more at target.com slash a bullseye view. New Dunkin' Refreshers. Vibrant fruit flavors like strawberry dragon fruit and peach passion fruit. B vitamins and energy from green tea. All under 200 calories. Order ahead via the Dunkin' app for a contactless way to order, pay, and pick up in the drive through America runs on Dunkin'. Price and participation may vary. Limited time offer. Amazon is hiring near you. Earn a competitive wage and start as soon as seven days. No resume or experience required. Health and safety are a top priority with all of Amazon's roles and sites. Amazon is taking precautions in their buildings to keep people healthy. Go to Amazon.com slash apply. That's Amazon.com slash apply. Amazon is an equal opportunity employer. Hey everybody, it is Shelly Shell Williams, host of Single on a Saturday Night. Make sure you follow us on Instagram at Single on a Saturday Night TV. That's at Single on a Saturday Night TV. Follow us on Instagram and we'll follow back. Hey everybody, it's Shelly Show Williams, Phillies Oprah, executive producer of Urban Expressions, single on a Saturday night, but I am a business, social media, and media coach. And if you're looking to show up on social media with a purpose, I have a course for you. Have you been struggling as an entrepreneur trying to figure out how to get people to engage, how to get people to buy, how to get people just to see you on social media? I have just a course for you. Please go to ShellyShellWilliams.com to find out more. WGFBFM Radio. So are you ready? Yeah. How it used to be. Something for everyone. 24-7-365. Yo, what's good? This is Tracy Lee, and you already know I get down with the Get Down Man, Grown Folks Radio, all day. Hi, everybody. This is Cinder Williams, and I am the co-host of the Melanated Morning Show and the host of the PPC Radio Show. And you are listening to Grown Folks Radio. 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 With DJ Kid Disco and co-host Cinder Williams. <laughs> All right, so we are back. Whoops, we are back. Whoops. Yeah, guys, thank you, thank you for for your comments. The last few I missed because I don't know why, but well, I, I saw your, all uh, the the love you guys had for Anthony and we're, we're missing your very frustrating story. 
Hmm? You can't see you. Sounds like you're behind a behind the curtain getting dressed. Ah, I thought I turned it back on. I wonder why. <laughs> you're behind the curtain getting dressed. Ah! Up. <laughs> yeah, everybody, you know, was really moved by his story. Uh, Paula, yeah. she was mad about his story. I understand. Since I was too. But, you know, <clears throat> anger is a, is a justified feeling, but you got to move and figure out how to change it. And this man has seemed to do it. He's very passionate. Um, he, he's very passionate. And um, so it was great having him on. So I hope you guys uh, can support him. And uh, thank you for supporting us by being here with us. Uh, we, we, we love you and we appreciate you. So uh, do we want to move on to a lighter note? Yeah, I'm, I, I want to share something with you. Okay. This date in history, the Titanic actually sank. Mm. Did you know that there was a black man who was a guest? Mm-mm. Yeah, they, they didn't show him in the movie. Yeah, yeah, and he definitely didn't get a, a, a one of them early rafts. You know, he didn't get one of those early seats. Yeah, this rafts. is back before rainbow casting was a thing. <laughs> <laughs> His name is actually Joseph Philippe Lim something Larochi. French, huh? French. Yeah, we know France was kind to us back in the day. Mm-hmm. Joseph Philippe Lemercia. Larucci. Uh, that please. is not said like that, but it sounded really funny coming out your mouth. <laughs> well, I don't care. I'm really alone. Out of my mouth. I'm <laughs> <laughs> really better though. <laughs> the first time, but he's the only black man to sail the Titanic. I thought that was an interesting piece of history. I didn't even know uh, we had a seat. I figured we'd be down there, you know, in, in the kitchen or something, but. He must have had a lot of money to be a guest. Yeah. He must have had a, he must have been a very wealthy. That'd be an interesting story. Well, you know me, I'm going to follow it even further now because I just mm-hmm. happened to be watching the, you know, how I love the Black News Channel. Yeah, he's a, he's a, a history, a student of history. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. You know me, I love his, I'm a history junkie. So when I heard that, I was like, huh? I had to go look that up. Oh shit! Mm-hmm. A spook rowing on, on like a Titanic. Damn! And he wasn't <laughs> rowing. <laughs> <laughs> I just found that interesting, Zebrees. You know me. It is interesting. It is. So I have a, a thought or a question I wanted to ask because I'm going through something, and I've been going through this for the entirety of my life. Okay, this is something, and and it, I've never really asked anyone else how they dealt with this or if they go through this. Um, by the way, our phone number is 833-476-9631, which is 833-GROWN with an E, one, if you want to call in and, and share your thoughts. Uh, I'll put it in the chat. So I know, oh, how did that happen? As a child, I know as a child, you know, we can be, people in general can can be all consumed with themselves because they really don't know other people yet. They, 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 um, they only know their own thoughts, so they can kind of be narcissistic. Children can be. You Stop know. sugarcoating it. Nick, uh, kids are ignorant. <laughs> just just tell what it is. Well, well, yeah. Well, we just you only know what you know, right? And right. so everything is about you for the most part, right? Whenever anything happens, that's why when there's abuse, children often blame themselves. You know, when something bad happens, they think, "What did I do?" And I was all of that, okay? I did that. I took responsibility for every living thing that happened around me. It was my fault and I believed it was my fault and I needed to fix me and whatever. And, you know, and to a certain point, I do believe, you know, we gotta take responsibility and not be victims. So in the things that actually happened to us in our lives, you know, what am I supposed to learn from this? Whatever, whatever, whatever. 
But this has been ongoing for me when it when it comes to things. I have experienced this. Every time I get close to a major breakthrough, I mean a major breakthrough, something happens to stop it. Now, I have little things, really great little things that happen every moment, every day, right? Little things. But those watershed moments, those your life, it will never be the same moments. I cannot count how many times that I have been on, on the precipice of total change. You know, 180 degrees, total change in my life when it comes to things of the world, like financial prosperity, uh, like... Um, you know, a relationship that blossoms into something really huge or whatever. Something major always seems to happen to stop it. And I I have learned, I used to be really angry about that. I used to be very, very, I walked around depressed because I was holding down this anger in myself for this. But it, it's still happening. And I'm curious how you guys deal with that. How Has that ever happened to you, Eddie? Have you ever experienced where you just were so close you could taste the change? Every time. And everything fell apart. I used to feel like as soon as I bend over to pick up a dollar, somebody right behind me to kick me in my ass. <laughs> But I can't stop going for that money. I'm just, that's me. So I'll just take the foot out my ass and brush off my ass and, oh, well, wasn't meant to be. Oh, you know, when you're coming from the ground up and you feel like it can't get no worse than it is now, so definitely anything well, else. I'm not, I'm not, I don't, I don't look at my life. I don't, I have, I have been extremely blessed. You know what I mean? I have had my rough times just like anybody, but <clears throat> compared to some man, I'm living the life, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm rich compared to the majority of the people in this world. Uh, I have food in my refrigerator. I have a job that I love. I am surrounded by people that are great people. I, I I'm very, very blessed. And, but like human nature, I want more, right? I want a step further. I want more. I want what my brothers and sisters have, right? When it comes to certain superficial things in life. And I rationally understand, you know, in a Christian religion, you know, that's not what matters. But I want it. You know, I want, I want certain things. And it takes, for my kind of lifestyle, it takes a major shift for that to happen. And so when so often it happens that I'm right there and it feels like it's about to happen and it doesn't again, again. I get very frustrated. I'm not as frustrated as I used to be, but I just, what do you think? Well, I mean- Okay, being in this industry, hmm. I've had a lot of no call, no shows, or I'm supposed to do work with this person. They don't get back to you or, or, you know, and, and, and you know of one particular, we're going to, we're not going to mention the person's name, but you know of one situation in particular, which would have opened many mega doors for both of us. If you remember. Yes. And it was a no call just like that. I got kicked in the ass and how did I deal with it? It was devastating. If you remember a series, it was devastating at first. Mm -hmm. And then I had this, this uh, voice in my head. I had a couple voices in my head, but one of them was your, get up, get up, get up. You know, like a, like a drill instructor, get mm -hmm. up, get up. So I guess the way I look at it is maybe it wasn't that time for me. I, I, I don't know. So when that happens, and it happens a lot, I just look at it as maybe it wasn't you know. I'm, I'm finally maturing enough so that I am getting there too. That it's just like, okay, I guess that wasn't it. My thing is, you know, my birthday's coming up next month. And I'm like, when will it be? 
Will it ever be? Should I just be happy with where I am and not want more? Because no, I I'm, don't. you know, I'm not, I'm, some people are starting to retire, you know, and I'm trying to still figure things out when it comes to certain things. Um, I do want to share this before, before. Real quick. I want to say something to you real quick. Sure. Say it. People like you, entertainers like you, I don't think y'all ever really do retire. No, no, we don't. I mean, I just, we just saw, and I'm just a prime example. John Amos just did a role, a reoccurring role in coming to America. How old is he about 85? So I don't think you ever really retire people like that. And I don't want to retire. You know, I really don't, but I want my coming to America. You know what I'm saying? I have, I have my Mobetta blues and I got paid the least amount of money you can get paid as an actor in a big movie. I want so they did a, a Mo Blues Blues. now that actually pays me for the work that I do. And, so if, they did a, and if they did a sequel, would you do it? If they offered me more money than dang on scale <laughs> and it was a good role. But I mean, of it course, wasn't they all about my, my breast flop flip flopping everywhere. I'd be happy to do it, you know? Like if they did it, you know, what's going on with Clark? Did Clark and Shadow ever get married or, you know? No, never. Mm-mm. <laughs> Clark didn't like it. Clark was just trying to get what Clark was trying to get. Exactly. No, he, Shadow was just trying to get what Shadow was trying to get. That's he true. didn't care yeah. about her. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Let's be real. That's Neither true. one of them cared. It was just like easy. That's true. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, you know, the 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 bleak son grow up in the in, you know in the music business and so, so many people have sent me their stories you know they have what's called fan fiction have you ever heard of fan fiction yes yes yeah where there people have sent me stories of what they think happens next and a lot of people get into that story about bleak and his family um and and what happened after and because so what do really you think what happened about the future hmm? so what do you think what happened to clark 25 30 years later what would clark be doing uh, as she was, I think she would have become quite a big star. I think she would have been an international, maybe bigger internationally than she was domestically. Wow. Because she was singing jazz and yeah. yeah. That was is a dying art form here, but not across the world. And I think she would have traveled. Um, I'm not sure if she would have found love though, because she loved herself quite a bit. Um, and you've got to learn how to love others a little bit. Um, I wasn't in love with my character, okay? Especially the way she ended up on the screen. I liked her Clearly. better because they <laughs> edited, edited her out. Um, but um, yeah, I, I think that she would have become a star. I'll bet a lonely one, you know? My question is what would have happened to her after, you know, she could have been a singer, a jazz singer for till death do his part, you know what I mean? Because that's the great thing about jazz. There's no expiration date on you doing that music because there are people all over the world that love it all the time. Whereas if you're a pop star, you can age out, you know what Quick. I mean? You, In six months, you can, you can age out. You can age out, right? But but certain types of music or R&B, you know, jazz, certain kinds of music, you can always perform all over the world if you got the right kind of fan base and i could see her doing that but i could also see her being very lonely maybe getting married you know over and over again to some guy she thought she loved and kind of like you know me um but uh no uh (laughs) i got i got married for wrong reasons all the time although i had they were great men but um yeah, wrong reason. I'm just imagining time. you playing the Clark Clark role like 30 years in into the future. Mm-hmm. And now you have a daughter who's getting into the business. Well, not you. Clark has a daughter mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. getting into the business and you're trying to well not you. Clark is trying to stop her from the demons of the business. Well, that's kind of what's happening right now with Cinda, you know, Cinda and Sophia, you know, um, I went through a lot of stuff as a young woman 
in this business that I don't want my daughter to go through. I, I mean, it was, it was no picnic. Okay. Especially in the beginning. And, and it's still no picnic. Um, you know, there's a, there's a cost that you pay for having a look that you have. And, and I get very tired of not being taken seriously for my abilities and my gifts. And all that some folks want to care about is how they can get in these pants. And it still happens. Um, my daughter is a gorgeous woman. She is beautiful. She's got a different personality than I do, though. Mm -hmm. I, I was very serious, but I was very innocent and, and, and you know, nice. My daughter don't play, okay? She's a Leo. She's strong. And she was raised by me. And we don't play um, because all that stuff that happened to me gave me a shell, gave me some strength and some spine that I didn't have as a young person. So the, some of the stuff that I went through, I don't think she'll go through, but I'm trying to help her uh, to avoid certain situations uh, because she's going to have to deal with that because even though Me Too happened and all of that, she's gorgeous. And there's still arrogant jerks that are gonna still try to take advantage of a newcomer. Um, but this newcomer, Sophia Gabrielle, is the daughter of me and, the, and Rod Plummer who know what happens and it, it ain't gonna happen the same way with her. Yeah, it ain't gonna so, happen like that, not on your watch. Yeah. So listen, we're gonna follow the same format at your with your permission as the ppc uh radio show and we're going to skip the break at the bottom of the hour we're going to go right to a quarter of and then i'm going to play a little bit of music mm -hmm. so we're going to follow the because that's a nice format good show yeah, yesterday is. by the way uh-huh Good show. That's a great show yesterday, by the way. Oh, thank you. It was. It was. It's always a good show. I love my my co-host Shelly Shell and Jenny Graham is now with us most of the time, and she's so brilliant. And all the guests are wonderful. DJ Joe Storm kills it on the music mix, and you are always a hilarious random black. Guy I'm just a random black bum. Gives us some awesome sound effects. I do want to, before you go, you know, we got 15 minutes. There's a couple of things in the comments I want to mention. Sure. First of all, thank you, Paula, for giving us the bio of Joseph Felipe Le Messia La Roche. Thank you. La Roche. Yeah, um, he was a Haitian engineer, and he was one of the only three passengers of known Haitian ancestry on the ill-fated voyage of the Titanic. He had put his pregnant French wife and their two daughters on a lifeboat. They survived, but he did not. Um, and he was an engineer. That was his job. Thank you for that. Um, thank you also, Christopher, for, for your beautiful compliment. Um, uh, hi, Earl. What's up, man? And thank you for being, joining us today. Michael, in response to my question, uh, commented, Michael Swinford, he says, this happened to him a year and a half ago. He said his, com his company was set to go big. He had brought in a business manager who, sc who screwed him over. He lost a $10,000 grant, loss of funding, a whole bunch of stuff. He was ready to give up. And he reached way down and realized that he started this theater company with nothing. So the thing was, so the thing is, this obstacle was nothing new. He said he had overcome a lot just to begin, and he had to begin again, and that was I the think strength. Michael Burgess is asking us, "Can he call in?" Yes, you can. Yeah, we're asking you to. Uh, but Michael, that I hear you, honey, and I know you're going through even more than that, Michael Swinford. And I'm so excited because Michael's going to be a guest on the PPC radio show uh, and uh, my podcast. Uh, as soon as he's able, I'm very excited, possibly next month, maybe beyond. We'll see how he feels. But thank you for that, Michael. And I don't think what I what I go through is, is new for anybody. I think everybody has those times yeah, where they just want that. more. They want to do more. They want to, you know, I want to be 
a philanthropist. I want to be one of those people that starts a school. I got that kind of cash flow. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm not trying to like live in no, you know, castle on the hill. I don't care about that. I do want a nice four bedroom house on a lake. Okay. But I don't want all that fancy stuff. I want money to, to have my stability, leave something to my kid, but also to share with the world. So I want more. That's, that's, well, I'm going to say more. it again. Like I say on the PPC radio show, I'm a bum. And my want in life is to sit on the beach earning while I sleep, of course, earning, you know, Mm-hmm. But I'm a. I want to be a bum sitting on the beach with a glass of Kool Aid, smoking the L, just being a bum. Cause baby, I'm a bum. <laughs> you know, and there's nothing wrong with that either. There's nothing wrong with that. And honestly, I don't want to kill myself working till I die. I, I want to work till I die because I like to work. I love to write. I love to act, sing, whatever, do the shows. I mean, I love doing doing this. I love talking to you, kid, and to our guests. Are uh, you going to call in, Mike? Call in. Let's under, but let's understand something. Hmm. I'm a bum because I put in some work. Hmm. On the public sector, sector and the private sector. Like, I got. You the- know, there's an actual term for what you're saying. I'm trying to remember. Does anybody remember what that term is? It's, uh, oh. Gentleman of leisure. That's what you want to be. A yeah, gentleman bum. of leisure. <laughs> yeah, bum. <laughs> right. <laughs> but you know, bum, you know, words are powerful. And what, what Jenny was saying yesterday is words are powerful. And and it's funny, yeah, but bum has a, a connotation to it. Uh I like gentleman of leisure because it means that you I like your- being a bum. <laughs> then then that's what works for you you know that's what works for you but i like teaching young people uh uh more proactive empowering no they can't be a bum you have to put in work to be it takes work to be a bum you know why you have to do hard work and everything while you're younger you know to be able to put money aside as as craig always teaches us so that when you get to be our age you can retire early and be a bum but you, you have to work for that it doesn't but you know what? There's a whole lot of bums that ain't never done nothing. And they really are bums. Bums are people that sit on their tail waiting for everybody else to do everything for them. That is a bum. Okay. Right, Paul. Ain't there, ain't there some shit? A gentleman of leisure on a beach. A bum. A beach bum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, th- you got a lot of laughter out of that. <laughs> out of your pride. Out of your pride <laughs> of being well, a, guess guess a quote what? unquote yeah. bum. Uh, they and and Michael Swinford said he with you. He want to be on that beach with you, man. He want to hang out and, and chill on the beach. And I definitely want my moments. That's why I want to live on a lake, you know, so I can sit there watch the water and the waves roll by. Um, I'm feeling that. But I but I like to travel too. I want to go to places I haven't been and. The opportunities Be are great. Breeze. I can't wait to bring up a new venture. Be yeah. Hey, Mike. Michael. Can you, you hear? Me? Yes, I could hear you guys. Hi. What do you have to say, Michael? What's up? Welcome to the. Yes, this is uh, Michael Burgess. I'm calling you from Montreal, Canada. I'm listening all to right. you. Who I live. Thank you. Yeah, Montreal, Canada. Listen, I wanted to say this to both of you. Uh, so the thank you for inviting me. And we both we all know the life in chapters. Life's all about chapters. And life is what we make it and when things don't happen, it's for a reason. That we sometimes we don't know why. But the reason could show up in ten years from now, maybe twenty years from now, but there's always a reason for stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I go by faith. And that's all we can do is go by faith and live the best you can day by day. I like but what's that for point. what's coming? What's for you will always come to you. Mm-hmm. You don't have to wait; it'll come. But our eyes have to be open to see when it comes to us that it's for us, not push it aside. Wow! You know, so Eddie, I just want to tell you, God bless. I I'm going to listen to you guys from now on. I thank you so much. Guess and what, I love Mike? Your words and where your heart is. Guess what, Mike? You and get one. Heart is. 
What I that had, again? I had to give you one. I had to give you a bomb. He gave you, you a, a that's the bomb. He gave you that's a bomb. <laughs> Say thank you. No, thank you so much. You and thank you for being our first caller. I'm so excited we had the someone from of all like this. <laughs> and but I know one thing that I am. I'm in my early fifties. I'm still a young man. But what you give in life and how you think. We control how we think. Wow. What's in our heart comes out of our mouth. Wow. Simple as that. That was that but was deep, just, brother. Yeah. yeah. Was... So it, it, I've learned that as I get older, that you wake up, have faith, move on, be happy. Things will happen. But wow. it's how you control it when it happens, because things will always happen. Wow. What do we do when it happens? What do we say when it happens? Because I could keep you guys on for five hours or stuff like that to me, <laughs> but I know. Well, we thank you for calling, Mike. You are our first caller ever. Yeah. We thank you, brother. Thank you. And Beth says, preach, Michael. Preach. No problem. I, preach, <laughs> Michael. Listen, once a month, I'm going to call. Okay, once a month, we but would that, appreciate it, brother. We really appreciate your participation. Yes, thank you. Brother. Thank you very, absolutely. very much. Thank you very much. All right. Okay. Bye-bye. You take care. Okay, that deserves applause. Give us some applause. Yes, I'm trying to find it. You know, I'm still kind of. <laughs> Thank you so much, Michael. Not only were you our first caller, you were giving us some gems of wisdom, and we really appreciate you. Please. Keep watching uh, every Wednesday and Thursday. We are on at this time, and we'd love to hear from you. We'd love for you to be a regular caller. Let us know what you're thinking. Um, and and I totally am feeling what he said, and that's the way I feel. Like I said, it was just something that I wanted to bring up to, to see other people's perspective because it's just something that's been going on for a long time, and I just had an, an, another experience yesterday where – there was this project I thought was going to be the one that was going to take me over. And then everything psh, bomb blew up. So, um, but you know what I found out too? Hmm. When you expect, sometimes when you expect the worst, it turns out to be the best. Cause I ain't going to lie, girly. Mm-hmm. I was scared to, at first to interview you. Hmm. I'm like, she don't like me, Shelly. She don't like me. She don't like me. She's not going to like me. <laughs> I need a, I need another I need another girl there. I need another woman there. She don't like me. Guess I was wrong about that one, huh? Yeah, you were wrong about that. <laughs> See how people prejudge? Yeah. I was like, oh Shelly, she's Hollywood. You know, I'm a no I'm a nobody. She's not gonna wanna work with me. She ain't gonna, you know. I wanna say a quick shout out to my brother. Uh, Hassan, Charles Hassan, and his wife, Cheryl. Oh, some of my favorite people in the world. Happy anniversary. It's their anniversary today. They've been married, shoot, how many years now? I think it's 26, 27 years. Damn. No, wrong. Too many. 21 years they have been married. And Still yes, damn. You are right. he, he <laughs> said that um, they have been favored and they have. They have been favored. Um, so listen, guys, I want to do a couple church announcements real quick. Um, first of all, again, tonight at 8 o'clock on Grown Folks Radio, check out me and my girl. Well, no, excuse me. It's her show. I'm the hired help on her show. It's since and, and me, <laughs> not me and her. You know what I mean? This is her situation. Night Vibes at 8 o'clock on Grown Folks Radio. Um, eight Eastern. Yes, eight Eastern. For those of y'all that enjoyed Keith from up the block, guess what? We got some news for y'all. Keith has agreed to be a regular, you know, like once a month or type of guy on the Melanated Morning Show. Yay! So, yeah, that means that people like me will be able to go take a break, (laughs) go sit down, and just do. You ever just wanted to take a break? I know you're you're you work hard, Seabreeze, but have you ever just wanted to just sit around and just do absolutely nothing? I wanted to do that, but I have a hard time doing that. You know, speaking of my brother Hassan, 
it used to be my father's house and my mother's house where I could do that. Um, now it's my brother's house in Texas. If I go to Texas, I go to their house, they have a guest room and I just relax. And I literally sleep for a week and recover. And um, it's, I have a very hard time not working when I'm at home. You know, um, I wish home was just a sanctuary. I honestly wish sometimes that I had an office. I, I, my house had a little outside house where I could make that the office. So all feelings of work would be out of my home yeah. because it's hard for me to stop working. Stop working. This is right there. Oh, another, speaking of working, another announcement I'd like to make. Um, we said, and we announced wrong, um, the PPC radio show can be heard on B-Force Radio on Fridays, not on Thursdays. <clears throat> on Fridays. Yeah, so if you missed the show, do we know what time, though? Is it 10 o'clock? Yeah, same time. Okay, if you missed yeah. uh, the PPC radio show on Wednesday, uh, you can either, you know, go on Facebook and watch it there or or YouTube or any of those things. Or you can go to BeForceRadio.com on 10 o'clock on Friday mornings and watch, and listen to the show there. Um, it's it's just a listening experience, though. There's no visuals on that. It's radio. Yeah, it's so radio. It was I mean, really, really fun. See how spoiled we are in this new technolo- tech, 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 technical world that... Mm-hmm. We have to see everything. Remember back in the day, all you did was just listen to the radio while you was washing the dishes or whatever you was doing, you know, clean the house or whatever. You just listen. You didn't know what the what the damn uh, DJ looked like until he appeared at a at a at a event or something. Yeah, and and I <clears throat> I still like sometimes I'll listen back on our shows <coughs> just to see where maybe I can improve or whatever. I right. just listen. I don't watch it. You know how yesterday I'm, you said you prefer to read? Yes. Well, mm-hmm. I'm going to take that concept to radio. I prefer, or, or DJs, I prefer to listen. I don't want to see what you're doing. I want to hear what you're doing as a DJ. If I'm listening to another DJ, I don't want to see you. I want to hear you. I want to close my eyes. Can you take me there? Music. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I feel the same way. I prefer it that way. I mean, I do like looking at you, though, when I'm talking to you to see your that's expressions because they're so funny. Yeah, that's different. Um, that's different. That's different. Yeah, but but I love listening because there's nuance there that you miss sometimes when you too, you're you paying too much attention to the visuals. You can lose what the words are, what people are saying. Like listening to Anthony today earlier in the show, those that just joined us, you missed Anthony, right? Oh my gosh, what a wonderful guest he was uh, with a, an exceptional story. I wish you'd been there. Maybe you should go back and listen to the rest of the uh, radio show if you missed it. But, you know, he he was so expressive vocally, you know, that it, I'm sure, I'm sure that if you just listen to it, you would get a lot out of it. And for those that are going to say something smart, yes, I'm smoking in Newport or the air. I don't care. Yeah, some people hate that, you know, but I guess part of your your charm is that you don't care, bum. <laughs> I'm the Black Morton Downey Jr., you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, so don't forget, if you, if you aren't a, a PPC podcast listener, please check out my podcast. Uh, it drops every Friday at noon Eastern, and it's kind of like an introduction to whoever's going to be on the PPC radio show the following week. And tell and, me about the you know, couple that you have coming up this week. Yeah, this week I have a couple, uh, Nikki and Jonathan Romaine. I have known Jonathan, well, I met, I'm not going to say I've known him because I don't know him, but I met him many years ago. He is one of the most phenomenal artists, one of my favorite artists, visual artists. And um, his wife is a beautiful singer, actress, and, and they, they came together after I, I met them separately. And then they got married and they started this wonderful thing in um, a school. And after, after school uh, in Peoria, it's a beautiful thing that they're doing. So I hope you guys can listen in tomorrow. Uh, it's on Anchor, Spotify, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, etc. It's on most platforms. 
uh, please check it out. Et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Mike Larkin said hearing and seeing are both important. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, it depends on, you know, who you are, you know. Hi, Johnny. Johnny uh, joined us late, but thank you for coming. I really appreciate it. All right, well, I think we're gonna wrap up uh, for Facebook uh, because we're gonna go to a music mix now. Um, but everybody else, you can listen in to DJ Kid Disco's inspiring music mix. Always, always killing it. I love well, his mix. I'm gonna be a little bit risque and ignorant because I don't care. Please don't, please. I really like the show and I really like the fact that we can communicate <laughs> with people on Facebook and I don't wanna mess it up. But you do know that I go live a lot on Facebook. Okay, well, it's your show. You don't know what to do. Uh, uh, nah, I won't do it. I won't do it. I won't, I won't do it. That just means I'll come back later on, like about five o'clock, and do a drive. I drive it, drive it, drive it. For hell, Joe mm -hmm. Storm goes live on Facebook every night. Mm hmm Well, if it works, it works. Good show, it by the way. He does a good show. Yeah. Joe Storm is awesome, and he always he always uh, provides the best mixes, uh, just just amazing mixes. And yesterday, both you and he did uh, some wonderful homage for for Dmx. You you really killed. Ah, uh, you know I I was so feeling that. I'm gonna replay that tonight on Sin Sin Show. Uh, that mix, uh, that that Dmx mix, because that was just I, I I was feeling that one. I was feeling that one. I was really feeling, feeling, feeling nothing more than feel. But I wanted to play one particular song before I, um, before we fade off from uh, uh, Facebook, um, Seabreeze. Um, mm -hmm. This one really sums up how I feel. Um, I, 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 I have to play this one. Welcome back. Welcome back, welcome back. Cause we got him on the spot. Welcome back, welcome back. Yeah, we tease him a lot. Cause we got him on the spot. Welcome back. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. I used to love that. You know why I played that? That was the show I watched. Hmm. I love you know, I used to love that show. You know why I played that? Why? I'm welcoming myself back. I'm so happy to be back and to be mm -hmm. able to see. I can sit back here. I ain't gonna be God is good. I can sit all the time. And read stuff and look at stuff and all that little good stuff. So Facebook. Um, we're going to sign off from Facebook. We're going to keep on going on the radio, but we're going to sign off from Facebook because Seabreeze asked me not to. Don't mess up the church's money. That's what my mama used to say. <laughs> Don't mess up the church's money. So anyway, God bless thank you all. You. Until next time. That's a wrap. Thank you, everybody on Facebook who tuned in. Uh, we appreciate y'all. Everywhere else, we're going to keep on uh, going. Uh, for just a little bit, uh, 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 just a little bit, just a little bit, you know, some stuff that I'm into, some, uh, uh, some good stuff, you know, that kind of stuff. All right, so Facebook, bye bye, Facebook. Sorry, you gotta work that out with Zuckerberg if you want to hear more. Sorry, can't, it's not my fault. It's, you know, that's what Zuckerberg does, though. So.